Hello and welcome to this tutorial on adding a unit test to ASP.NET MVC projects in Visual Studio 2013. Uh, if you created a project and you clicked on that box that said unit test, this would have all been generated for you from the get-go. However, if you created a project for uh, an MVC project or even a web forms project in ASP.NET uh, and did not click on unit tests, then adding all of the unit tests in and the references uh, can be a little bit of trial and error, so I'm going to help you out with this with this tutorial. So real quick before we get into the actual how it uh, is going to work and how we're going to get it to work for us, I'm just going to talk about unit tests real quick and what are unit tests and why they're useful for uh, test-driven development. Um, so what it is in test-driven development, test cases are written before the software is written. Uh, these test cases are based on how software is expected to function. So definition of unit tests. Uh, unit tests, they test small pieces of production code uh, that are tested in units. Unit tests should be made for all public methods of a class. Uh, test objects in isolation and automate. So what all that means is you want to try and test the smallest possible function that your, your software is going to have. Um, whenever, whatever your feature is or whatever the, that function is, just test the smallest possible logical unit of that. Um, you also want to make your test for just the public methods of the class. You don't want to make a, a unit test for every single private method of the class. So basically your, your public methods are those methods that you're going to give out to, to be used by other developers or other people that are using that object. And so it shouldn't matter what the underlying uh, logic is to it, but if the, uh, you get the correct output for, the, for an, a given input for a public method, and that should satisfy the test cases. Um, those tests should be done with objects in isolation. That way if something fails, you know what the smallest piece is that failed and you're not trying to troubleshoot the entire system. You're just troubleshooting that, that one small piece. And of course we want to automate this to save ourselves time. So this should be uh, being run by your, uh, your build server. Um, or basically so you, you don't have to go through and by hand check each input and output. Every time that you go and, and make a, a new build for a project, you want to have that automated so that if you're refactoring something in the future, you're not breaking something that used to work. So this brings us to the red and green uh, refactor cycle. This is kind of a concept used with uh, test-driven development. And what this is, is basically you're gonna design a test for a feature for an object uh, that should perform. So let's say that uh, you have an object that deals with locations and you want it to uh, do a conversion between uh, latitude and longitude and degrees minutes seconds to degrees decimal. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a test for that feature that takes the, the, the input of the degrees minutes seconds and then it should give you the appropriate output for whatever that would be in uh, degrees decimal. So you're going to go ahead and create the test for that and then that new test should fail the first time you run it because your feature hasn't been implemented yet. You haven't written the code for it or anything. So then what you're going to do is you're going to write enough code to make that pass and then, uh, so the, the very first time that you go through with this, this could just be a, a hard-coded output that it, it might not even actually do the conversion. It's just giving you the, the expected answer for the, the input that's given in the test. And, and that's fine for right now. You just want to make sure that your test is up and running, that your test works correctly. Um, and then after that, you're going to uh, refactor it and uh, repeat. So basically just go through and actually make the, the code that's going to work for that, make whatever private method you need to make or, or do whatever you have to do to make that, that code work. And you're going to repeat this method. Um, once you get through and you get that, that test case and that, that, uh, the unit test working, you're going to go ahead and want to write a new unit test for an additional feature. You don't want to just keep on coding from there uh, so that you have a unit test for each of the uh, public methods in an object. So the, the given structure of a unit test, uh, there's, there's basically three parts that we're going to have here, and there's an arrange section, an act section, and an assert section. Um, the arrange section is going to be where you're going to do your initial setup of your object. If you need to, to generate any objects or, or pass in any, uh, create any, any uh, dictionaries or arrays or anything like that, you're going to do it in the arrange section. In the act section, you're going to actually uh, call those methods and give it whatever the, you know, pass in the parameters that that method's expecting and then uh, and get something back from it. And then the assert section, you're gonna to want to assert what that output should have been given, what the input was. Uh, a really important point with this too is you don't wanna assert uh, multiple things in one test case. You wanna make the test case as small as possible. So if, if there's several different assertions that you wanna test, then, then create separate test cases. That way you can see which one of those assertions is actually the one that's failing. 
uh, makes it a, it'll make it a little bit easier to, to troubleshoot this uh, in the end. So uh, the the big benefit of of adding this the uh, unit testing and working with test driven development is that we're going to be able to, to catch issues uh, as soon as they pop up. So when you're when you're refactoring your software, if if you uh, create a new bug, you're going to realize it immediately. You're not going to you know especially if if sometimes when you're refactoring code, you might create a, a bug that might pop up in some separate section of your software that that you weren't uh, considering. But when you're creating good tests for this, you should be able to uh, um, catch those bugs before it makes it to a, a production environment. So with that, let's go ahead and add testing to our existing project. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, add some unit tests to this project. So what I've got here is a basic uh, website, uh, it's a getting started tutorial, um, just based off the, the boilerplate code that Microsoft provides for uh, an MVC project. So it's just the, the basic website, the about and contact. So we're gonna stop that. Um, so what we're gonna do is, if you notice on here on the left-hand side, uh, I don't have the, the unit tests uh, project in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on solution, click add, new project. And then underneath Visual C Sharp, I've got tests, and then unit test project. I'm gonna go ahead and name this to something sensible. So in this case, I'm gonna say it's uh, getting started tutorial tests. So now I've got my getting started tutorial and I've got my getting started tutorial tests. So in here though, notice that we are missing all of the references. See, these are all the references that we would have had had, uh, had we have, of, uh, you know, built this at the original time when we built the rest of our project from the uh, the template that Microsoft provides. So what we're gonna do is uh, right click on references and there's three references we need to add. So the first we're gonna do is uh, manage uh, NuGet package. And on here we're gonna look for uh, MVC and we're gonna get the Microsoft MVC, uh, the ASP.NET MVC package. So give this a minute. All right, so Microsoft ASP.NET MVC, hit install. So that's gonna add those references right over there. The next one that we're gonna add is we're gonna right click again on references, hit add reference. And then in uh, assemblies, we're gonna look for uh, C sharp. So Microsoft C sharp, add a reference to that one as well. And then one last one that we're gonna add. So add uh, this reference is gonna be for the solution itself. So getting started tutorial, add a reference to that, very important. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, just go ahead and re rebuild this, make sure everything's connected correctly, nothing uh, fails. All right, so we have our unit test one. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and rename this to controller test, because I wanna test the, uh, I'm gonna test the controllers inside my uh, getting started tutorial. So. In here, I've got controllers and I've got my home controller. I want to test out the stuff that's in this. So I'm going to go ahead and move this to the, uh, the right side of the screen. And on the left hand side, I'm going to get my uh, controller tests. There we go. So and now there is a, uh, a few using statements that we're going to have to add here to make this work. So we're going to go ahead and put using system dots collections dot generic after that uh, using systems or system dot link using system dot text Using system.web.mvc, using, uh, let's see, we're going to use the getting started tutorial, and we're also going to do it using getting started tutorial.controllers. So we've got that set up now. So we have uh, inside our getting started tutorials tests. Um, for our controller test, we have one test method, but we want to do is we want to make a test method for each of these uh, public uh, methods right here. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna call this one test method index. 
And then in this uh, test method, what we're going to do is we're going to create our three sections. Remember, we had a range, we had a at, and we also had a cert. So in the arrange section, we're going to type in there uh, home controller. And then we're going to write controller, call it controller. We're going to equal, I have that equal to a new home controller. And then in act, we're going to have a view results. Uh, results equal controller.index as a view result. And then in assert, we're going to assert, make sure that it is not null for the result. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and test this. So click on test, run all tests. And that's going to go ahead and build that, run our tests, and we can see our index uh, checked as a, a green box there. So we're going to make uh, two more of these. Uh, we're going to do another uh, public void. All of these test cases are just going to be void. Um, they're not going to return everything. They're just going to uh, make the, uh, the assert there and then fail if they fail. Um, so the next one that we're going to do is an about. And then so in this about method, or this uh, about test, we're going to do again uh, arrange act and assert. So again, in our range, we're going to set this up. So we're going to make a uh, new home controller. We just put this back in there again. So we've got that. In our act, um, we're going to set up uh, the another view result. So view result, result equals controller dot about as a view result. And then uh, one more thing that we're going to add in there is for the assert, we're going to assert, and this time we're going to do uh, dot r equal. And then in r equal, uh, we're going to write in here uh, your application description page. So that's going to be the same thing as what's up over here on the, the right. Um, and then we're going to pass in. Uh, results dot view bag dot message so what this is doing here is it's getting uh, for r equal we're checking to make sure that the uh, result dot view bag dot message which was passed in from here is going to be equal to this string right here so r equal takes uh, two parameters and we want to check to make sure that they're the same. And then with the same thing, uh, with up here is, is assert is not null. We're just checking to make sure that this actually returned uh, that view result that we expected to return. It's not a, a null uh, return. So one last one to test that last message, or the last uh, method there, we're going to do another public void. And then for uh, contacts, same thing. Arrange home controller controller equals new home controller. So act the uh, view results result equals controller dot contact. as view result. And then we're going to assert. So 
So assert, and then again, we're gonna do a uh, is not null, is not null, results. So we can go ahead and uh, run this test again. So run uh, all tests. So I'm gonna go ahead and build and we should get uh, more pass tests back. So something we forgot there, sorry about that. Uh, we gotta designate this as a test method. Oops. Test method. So uh, just a second ago when we uh, ran these, it only showed that first one because we designate that first one as a test method, but we didn't designate the other two as a test method. So try that again. So run all tests. There we go. So now we got all three tests to pop up. So that's what we wanted to, we expected to see. Uh, so we could also make this one right here. If we try just changing this to application description page, uh, instead of running all the tests again, say we have a, a lengthy set of tests and we just want to test that one thing, we can go ahead and test just this one. So run selected tests. Oops, about, it's actually one we wanted to run. So, run just that selected test. And now that about fails because that string does not equal the string that's actually showing up on the website. So you can test pretty much anything with all of these. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, my, like I said before, I couldn't find a, uh, a good tutorial like this and had to, to stumble through this myself. So I hope that helps.